Hello and welcome everybody. Josh RV Nerd here on a beautiful day here in Coldwater, Michigan in my hometown store, getting you some updated footage on the 184 Jayco. This is that, uh, you know, a lot of brands build this little floor plan right here. It's simple, it's straightforward, it gets the job done, son. It is a small, lightweight little single axle family bunkhouse with some rare qualities. And generally speaking, I think the big things that they really need to hit, they're knocking out here. There's a couple little things on this that kind of make me grind my teeth a little bit, but generally speaking, there's there, there are things I can work around. Like, the kitchen doesn't have any drawers like ah but they have added shower surround paneling and it is a 60 by 80 true queen bed in a little camper that is very rare very hard to find um they've reinstated the side mount air conditioner so your overall exterior height on this is lower although i think you might still be able to option on a roof air i need to double check on that it's been a little while since i verified my specs you have some optional solar available on these they are carpetless even in the slide out and that's the thing that's what separates the 184 from the 174 they're basically basically the same floor plan, but the 174 has no slide and it has a little barely two-person dinette. This does have a slide and it allows for a full family of four, assuming, uh, you know, two adults and two smaller kids to all pack into the dinette at the same time. Not to mention it folds down into a bigger sleeper. It's a little camper that can sleep four easy, five if you include the dinette, and more if you throw an air bed on the floor. Now this isn't arctic package rated with some made up uh insulation value for space capsule re-entry or whatever the crap the rv industry wants to throw at you out there if you're looking for your first camper or you have a limited tow rating and you're trying to get all the people in it but you want to spend most of your time outside getting dirty making memories that's your hook barrett right there so one of the things i'm liking this year it's not overtly a major change at first glance but they basically kind of combined the two previous decors to make one decor, and it's sort of working for me. It just looks sharper. It looks cleaner. It doesn't have, the cabinetry doesn't have those little accents that make it maybe kind of look dirty right from the factory level, you know? But let's let's knock this right out here. One of the really cool things on this one is a 60 by 80 true queen bed space up front. Now, I've been very vocal about the fact in my videos, a lot of these mattresses do leave something to be desired, certainly. Uh, but, you know, it is kind of nice when a manufacturer does make some effort. Now, they tweaked around their dinette setup here a little bit, and I'm not normally a fan of a knee knocker post. However, notice how half the table brackets against the wall, and it is a step up slide, and it has to be because this lightweight little camper, um, the wheel well sticks up into the body. So the slide has to float over that. Well, by going with a single post, they've minimized the knee knocker function, but they've also made this very sturdy and very stable. So if you need to push yourself up when you stand up, or if you bump the table sideways a little bit, yeah, it'll jiggle a little bit, but it's not gonna go flying everywhere. And if somebody's drinking red Kool-Aid, it's not gonna make this awful, terrible mess. Um, up front, up top here in the upper left, you do have your side mount air. Those are an 8,000 BTU, by the way, which I've been told by a lot of people, uh, my, my Southern kind of clients in a little camper like this is the minimum you would want, but sufficient for, for keeping the thing, uh, you know, fairly cool inside given no bigger than this RV is. But there are also, I, at last I knew options for roof mount air. If I'm mistaken on that, I do apologize. I'll try to double check and leave a note on screen there. That's also been a bit of a rolling target that Jayco is one year they do it, one year they don't. They've kind of moved that around a little bit. That is the prep point there for a solar charge controller, whether you choose to add one after the fact or if you uh, get one with the factory solar package. It's 200 watts and a 30 amp charge controller, which keep in mind, um, not going to be the be all end all, but given decent sun coverage, uh, it is generally considered to be uh, 200 watts is enough to offset the demands of that 12 volt fridge. But it really depends on when and where you camp and tree coverage and a hundred other things. And this is our TV prep location over here. Straight across from the dinette, there is, I think, still an optional sofa on this one. Again, this is the, I know I sound like, does he not know what the options are in this? Well, this, the, the, the new models just came out at the time I'm recording this. I have no idea when this footage is going to see the light of day. So maybe I've gotten my eggs, uh, ducks more in a row, uh, you know, since I've recorded this, but, um, at, at this time, you know, everything is kind of new and in a state of flux. What hasn't changed though, is Jayco still being very adamant about staying consistent on their, their bunk capacities here, as we can tell with the dangler, which is what they call this in the marketing department. Uh, that is uh, indicating to us that each of these is a 300-pound rated bunk. 
Um, I've seen as low as 120 on single bunks, although I've only seen that one time. That was an exceptionally rare instance from a very budget aggressive, I don't want to say cutthroat brand, but cutthroat brand. And I'm not going to get into who because I'm not all about that life. USB plugs up top, household outlets for the bunk below, window for the bottom bunk, no window for the top one. So that's going to be kind of a thing you want to keep in mind. Now you might notice that those bunks don't have any kind of privacy curtain. Um, in a way, I'm not mad about that because otherwise they would not have any real good way of getting air conditioning in there. But, you know, privacy is nice. But I think when we're in a little camper like this, frankly, everybody's breathing everybody's air regardless. So kind of keep that in mind. Now, again, we're looking at the 184 today, which is nice that it's carpetless over here with the slide. But if you're not interested in the, the slide out here, if you can live with a little bit smaller dinette, you can save a little weight and a little cost by going with the 174, Jayco, instead of the 184. Same floor plan, just no slide. Other than that, it's just, you know, they, they just rinsed and repeated it. Now, what is also kind of cool and a rare find in something like this, funny, we just talked about privacy, you do have a front bedroom curtain. The trick with that is if you do utilize that front bedroom curtain, you're kind of, not totally, but kind of hogging all the air conditioning away from everybody else. So you might also want to keep that in mind and maybe leave it cracked a little bit by your feet, perhaps. I'm not sure, but that's a thing to think about. The bed doesn't have any kind of strut to easy lift it, but using the, um, basically the jack crank, you know, your corner stabilizer jack, I've always found a way I can prop that up and frankly, it'll do what I need to. That is also your outside storage. Now the kitchen for what it is has decent storage, no bigger than the camper is. I do like how they went with a small stove and a small sink so that we always have some measure of dedicated counter prep space. It's not amazing. It's not terrible. And I guess I should amend my statement where I said there's not a single drawer in the kitchen. I think you know what I mean. There is technically, there's a little drawer over here under the dinette. And there is a drawer below the refrigerator. But I think, you know, when you're thinking of drawers in the kitchen, that's not exactly uh, what's on your mind. One of the nice things here compared to years ago, these used to um, be only like six foot one inside. They were actually very short. I couldn't totally stand up in them myself, but they are six and a half foot tall now. Uh, not, not like that's a major earth changing factor. And frankly, most other single axle campers in this class were pretty similar, but there are still a number of smaller class campers that are uh, a reduced size. So it's, it's still worth mentioning. And this bathroom, for no bigger than the camper is, is fairly fluffy friendly around the toilet at least. What is kind of a little bit of a hitch in its giddy up is the bathroom itself has no storage. So I'd be getting the stud finder, holding it up to my chest, calibrate it by going, yup, there's one. And then finding studs in the walls to add like a cabinet or something. Like I might take that mirror down and put like a, uh, a towel cabinet or something over there. Now it does have a little tub instead of a shower because they do go with a shower curtain and the tub helps keep that under control. And your input is the reason this has shower surround paneling for several years, uh, actually quite a few. It did not have that. And so many of these little campers have zero skylight above the shower. And as you can see with a six and a half foot tall bathroom or floor to ceiling height, when I step up into that uh, tub shower pan, it makes a difference. Now, kind of like the kitchen drawer thing, the one other thing I wish I could change in this RV is this is not a powered vent like you almost always assume there would be. Now, there is power coming off that light right there. So in theory, you could piggyback off that and upgrade that vent to a power fan. But by default, it doesn't actually have any sort of power fan function. And it does have a little bit of the peekaboo I smell you door up top there. Something else this one has, though, which is actually kind of nice, is it has some really, really good travel function. Because kind of like it's 174 no slide sister cousin. Oh, no, that sounded wrong. You know what I mean? You, you get the you get what I'm saying? Just the, the 174, the no slide version of this. Um, you walk right through the sucker. You can get to the bunks. You can get to the bathroom. You can get to the kitchen. This has some excellent excellent travel access and function hey little pro tip for you i just noticed when you're running this slide out make sure you put the curtain for the bed like up on the mattress because if you're not paying attention it can get caught in that slide mechanism and get bound up in there 
and that is a surefire way to ruin your weekend. So, uh, you know, ounce of prevention, definitely worth a pound of cure right here. Something else that's an easily overlooked quality on this one, that if you're a first time RVer, maybe you're just not aware that you should even scope this out, is the cargo capacity here. This has a 5,500 pound GVW. That means gross vehicle weight, maximum trailer weight. Uh, so the, the base camper that we're looking at, about 3,400 pounds, give or take, which leaves around 1,100 pounds of cargo. There are some of these single axle little guys out there that I've seen less than 600 pounds of available cargo capacity on. They are, for, for some folks who travel with a lot of stuff or, or you know need water off grid, for some folks, they, they literally don't work. They're, they're utterly useless. And this one allows you that extra opportunity. But it's things like that, like that costs, ex like a, a heavier axle, a heavier chassis to accommodate that. That costs a couple bucks. So, um, you know, every manufacturer spends their money uh, a little bit differently here. Like they've got tinted windows on this. You've got that two plus three year warranty that goes on this. And you know, a thing with warranties, they make you feel good, but keep in mind, you're paying for it, you know. Uh, <laughs> no business trying to make money ever does something just typically purely out of the goodness of their heart. I don't like what I just said, but if we're being real, we all know that's true. Now, I really should have moved that microwave box out of the way, but we already kind of saw that from the inside. That's the storage under the bed that we're looking at from the outside. One cool thing here is you've got a key-like system on this, so the key that uh, will get into that baggage compartment is the same key that'll uh, throw like your deadbolt and your uh, your entry door handle right there. And if it would save a couple bucks and get some wiring and holes out of the side of the RV, personally, I'd be all right with getting rid of those outside speakers, but that's just me. Now, it's not the world's biggest awning, but it's a small camper. There's just not a whole lot of room or opportunity for things like that. Down here, you do have a gas grill cooker hooker, uh, aka propane hookup. So if you are trying to do a little cooking outdoors and keep the heat from cooking outside, along with all the smells and humidity and everything, you can do that. Um, Jayco does not, I, I couldn't decide if I want to say not or no longer, and I was like, <laughs> anyway, um, they no longer have J Smart lighting standard on everything, but you can see that you do have the reverse travel lighting standard on here. You also have that tankless on demand water heater. So if you're going to do some back to back showers for the kids at night, uh, you know, plus the adults, it's nice to be ready to leave in the morning. You can do that here. Although, you know, keep in mind, you're, you'll fill up your gray tank quick doing that. And they are prepped and ready for a uh, telescopic removable ladder. These have had a walk-on roof for years, but a lot of folks didn't see a ladder prep. And there's kind of um, a myth that used to be true that's no longer true regarding ladder stuff and roofs in the RV industry that hopefully I can help dispel. A lot of people think and a lot of people are told if it doesn't have a ladder or any way to get up to the roof on the back, then um, it doesn't have a walkable roof. That isn't and hasn't been true for most of my time in the RV industry. Very few things anymore don't have walkable roofing because it's literally cheaper for a manufacturer to standardize one style of construction. So uh, there are a couple, there are still a couple out there. If an RV doesn't have a walkable roof, I'll let you know. But for the most part, almost anything I cover tends to. Um, so just because there's not a ladder or a ladder mount or prep or anything on the back doesn't mean you can't walk on it. Most of the time, you still can. It's definitely worth investigating. Now, as I've mentioned, there's no shortage of other models kind of like this. So what I'll do uh, is leave you some links in the video description. One, to check for pricing and availability, and two, where you can scope out similar floor plans like this from some other brands to kind of see which one works best for you. And I'd be kind of curious to know which one you like a little bit better and why. You know, if you want more flashy razzmatazz, things like a Geo Pro or an Ember will do that. If you're looking for something comparable, but not identical, Catalina, uh, Wolf Pup, those would be some really good options for you. Or the FSX division by Salem Wildwood, really, really smart stuff there too. But that's the thing, they all have a couple things that they that do something better than the others, like the big bed here, the better warranty, the tinted windows. Jayco's crushing those Jayco things. Not every other brand does those, but they do some things these Jayco's don't do too. And that's why we carry all these RVs, and that's why I make that video uh, all the time, to help you, these videos all the time, whatever, to help you find your second RV the first time. So when you're ready, we're ready. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Mm -hmm.